Welcome to day four in the shed. Well tonight you've uh, caught me at the end of the day. I've had quite a fruitful day today. Um, I've been working on the frame over there and now that's all finished welded. It's all been rubbed down, sanded and is ready for a coat of paint. Um, it's too cold today, too windy because I'll have to do it outside. I'm not going to take everything out of the garage to use it as a spray booth. That will uh, be done as soon as we have a day sorted out and then I can then get on to bolting onto the back of the trailer. Plus I've got the things to bolt onto there so the bikes and forth of the paper goals. <laughs> um, so that's finished uh, at last. And from this distance, you can see how good the welds are. But they are held together, so it's fine. Over on the far side, I've just uh, started soaking an air box in that blue tray with a bit of my nap boy here. And my assistant there was just about to disappear over a, onto a face, tipping over a wire. Um, just it's an air box for the SRX. It's one of the few things I haven't actually finished cleaning. And once I finish cleaning that, that will then go into the dishwasher when somebody goes out for one of her walks. It'd be too late for a bit to stop it. And tomorrow I'm going to work on this, the engine. When I stripped it out. I noticed there was lots and lots of tape wrapped around all this wires up here. Uh, I bolted that off and I've just cleaned it and give it a little bit of a polish as you can see. It's a bit, needs another rub down. But if you look at these wires, they were all taped up and obviously somewhere along the line they've all been shredded. That's broken. Where all those are rubbed through. The same up here, there's one or two rubbed through up here. So I've been pondering which is the best way of fixing these. I do have some soldering joints that uh, just use a hot air gun, which I might have a go at just cutting and just rejoining them. I don't want to shorten them because they probably won't reach where they're going to go, but I also don't want to end up with a great bulky part that might not be able to thread through where they're going through the frame. So I'll have to have a think about that. So what was a five minute job is now going to be a couple of hours or more to try and make it look half decent. That's just the neutral light switch that goes down onto there. But that will all have to come off because there's no gasket underneath there. I need to send for a gasket when I send for a new sprocket. The sprocket on here is just a I've seen some worn sprockets and that's what I call a little bit worn as you can see it's a quite a good hook I have seen worse I've actually seen ones where that's all missing uh, but there wasn't a lot of movement with the bike it was just a lot of whirring noises it went through the chain so it needs a chain a sprocket, the back sprocket funnily enough is brand new so I've not quite figured out what's going on there because by the time you bought a chain and a sprocket kit it's almost the same as just buying a chain or just buying two sprockets it comes when you get them together it's much cheaper so I, I presume whoever was putting this together and it has been put together recently because there's new gaskets everywhere and the engine does run, it's, it's, we've had it running and it's very uh, quiet running so we don't think there's anything wrong with it, we just think that it's um, run out of money I think because a lot of things were done that spent a lot of money on certain bits and when they started putting it together it looks like they just ran out of money and threw it together to, to flog. Um, but hopefully this is my going to be my summer run about 
but it remains to be seen if we can get it all together and running. Um, as you, it's the SRX 400 is uh, a Japanese import. It hasn't. It's got the same as an XT 600 engine, but with a 400 barrels to, to, for the Japanese market because that's their licensing laws. Uh, means anything over 400 it is a completely different license, very difficult to get hold of. The only pitfall with these engines is, if we turn it over here, is that it doesn't have an electric start and it only has a kick start. And these kick starts are only for this model. So when these break, The only thing that'll fix them is another SRX 400 or 600 kickstart, and they'll go for a second hand of 100 pounds for a kickstart because nobody's got them and they're not made anymore. I have in the box over there a spare one because somewhere along the line I sort of collected these and had about six at one time, and so I've got a spare tank which is the other pitfall with these. Tanks and kickstarts. Tanks with all lots of Japanese motorcycles in the 1980s. The actual tank uh, drain, um, petrol drain, is above the bottom of the tank. So water collects in the bottom of the tank and rots them out from the bottom. And the tank on this one has been re-welded. And it's, it's, uh, it's been done quite well, so I'm going to use it. It's all stripped out, ready to paint as said yesterday so that's going to be painted um, as soon as the weather turns warmer uh, it's going to be my first attempt at doing a complete tank I've been sat there looking at YouTube <laughs> how to spray a tank I bought myself a much better spray gun because the spray gun I had before was a cheap 15 pound one and I found it just didn't give a good finish whereas I've now got a um, a set uh, for about 150 pounds, which is the sort of an intermediate or the bottom end of good ones. So hopefully you'll be able to see that sometime. And I'm going to say you can see here this one's actually cracking, just there. And they, they usually crack across and then shear off. Um, but I'm not going to do anything else. So if that's it for today, it's getting towards 7 o'clock, so I'll call it quits. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye.